So one of the positive things about having a lot of time in the bush is that it's given us the opportunity to focus on a lot of the smaller things that we often don't have time to focus on. You know, we are very fortunate to have a plethora of large animals out here and we spend the majority of our time looking for leopards and lions and elephants. Um, but sometimes you need to just sit back and enjoy the smaller things that these areas have to offer. The beautiful thing with these reserves is that they are literally a time capsule. You know, the soils haven't been disturbed. There's not building all over the place and foundations. So a lot of the prehistory has been preserved very, very well. And where we're standing at the moment is a old village of thousands, possibly even hundreds of thousands of years old. And um, we've determined this by picking up little artifacts all over the place here. Now, it goes from pottery that is from the Iron Age. Now, we're not 100% sure of the dating, but it could be around 1,800 years old. And each tribe had a very specific pattern. We're not sure which tribe this was, but it's amazing to think that this piece of pottery has been here for 1,800 years. Then we can go even further back to a little bit more of a rudimentary cutting tool. Um, you can see here where they've broken pieces of what's called flint napping to create a razor sharp edge and even a slight serration to be able to cut possibly meat, processed meat. This is a much more detailed piece. You can see how sh sharp the sides of this is. A beautiful little cutting implement. So these pieces could be from the middle and late Stone Age. So we are talking about you know, 40,000 years ago that they were picked up by most possibly, most probably the, the Sun people. And you can see here that's where an amazing skill level sets in, where this piece has been manufactured into a, a beautiful cutting in, in, implement. Now if you go back to the, to the older pieces that we, you know, we, once again we're guessing about 280,000 years ago. You can see here there's another cutting tool. You can see it. They, got, they weren't as, as, as skilled as, as modern humans are. These are our ancestors, Homo sapiens, just before us that probably made this. But this would be something that the sun would, would have picked up and, and, and re-engineered into something a little bit more modern. And then, what's even more exciting is it gets older. We pick up hand axes from... We think from the Aculean industry, it's, uh, it's, it's made anything from a million years to 1.7 million years ago. Now, if you see here, um, the, the work was also same, same principle, pieces of bro rock broken off. You can, you can see the scarring, and it was probably a big rock that was shaped into this kind of shape to make a multi-purpose tool. So this was used for cutting, it was used for everything. This was literally this guy's Leatherman. So we presume this could have been made by a, a hominid uh, referred to mostly as Homo ergaster. Um, there's a bit of a debate whether ergaster and erectus are the same, but I'm not going to get into that and also not qualified enough to talk about that. But a very, very early hominid used to survive using this. Now what's fascinating about this is this is one of the first signs of planning happening. So in other words that hominid picked up a rock and thought about what it was going to do and this is the end product. And there's a lot of people that are of the opinion is, is this was the catalyst to our development and to our brain development. So to think that this has evolved into the smartphone that is taking that video over 1.7 million years is just astounding. And it's lying all over the place here. So some fascinating stuff out here.
So this is, it doesn't look like much, but it's once again something fascinating in the same site we're talking about. This is a grindstone. And if you can pick it up on the on the phone there, you can see this beautiful granite boulder. In the middle, there's a smoothed out area. And you can see there's a slight hollow there. Um, so the idea was, if you were maybe working a, a piece of skin or possibly even even food, you know, if, 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 if there was agriculture, that means much more of a modern society would be grinding here. So once again, it, it, it fascinates me to think this was an ancient kitchen. So I'm going to attempt to show you how the, the basic kind of flint mapping happened where these early humans and our ancestors used to create these flakes. Now, firstly, you try and find any rock, probably this is not the best example, get a square piece and you usually find a, a, a kind of rock like a flint or, or chert that, 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 that breaks up easy, but it should work. Um, so you try and find an angle and hit it at about a 45 degree angle to, to where you want to break the piece off and then hopefully you're going to get a workable piece or you plan and make a hand axe of this. Now it's going to take a while, let me see if we can get a, just a piece off so you can see the theory behind it. So you literally see, see the scarring happening there. It's already forming a sharper edge, but it's going to take a very, very long time to get a big rock worked into something that you can use to cut. Just gives you a bit of an appreciation of the skill level of these hominids and our ancestors.